Oh, you're gonna skip your turn? You're gonna let me OTK? <laughs> oh, someone's gonna get killed now. Let's do this. <laughs> Hey, I'm Super Senpai, and today we're going to be talking about the Grand Maju Golden Castle Waking Dragon deck. 60 cards too! So if you've seen my first video about the Pendulums, you know I, I have a big obsession with 60 cards because of Pod Desires. So when I built this deck, originally I was making a dice deck because, you know, that's fun to, you know, put all into luck. And I realized the most effective card in that deck was Battle Fader. So because of that, I decided, alright, I'm gonna try and make a banishing deck based on those principles and Grand Manju obviously is a banishing card and this deck is not supposed to be a meta deck and somehow it got me to Platinum 1. So this is a Platinum 1 Grand Manju Golden Castle Waking Dragon deck. So right up front this is You'll be looking at decks because I don't get it like how why would you play half of these cards and the point of this deck is every one of these cards is a power play that means any cards your opponent use they have to negate they have to spend a lot of resource for it and most importantly you save your resources for the most important times three battle faders you try this trust me any deck out there if you play battle fader in master duel because of the fact that you only have one time to win you can't have best of three people panic people try to go for the otk as fast as they can and when they see battle fader they don't want they usually don't negate it and because of that that saves your battle phase that allows you to get one more draw from the card most likely you can go back right at them after that so battle fader is a real crucial card master duel because people don't expect how good this card is eight years of millions very important card when i talk about the extra deck it doesn't really matter too much about this extra deck because it goes to banish as fast as you can special summon him this is a very good card for banishing decks because it helps out with the Grand Maju, your OP card of the deck. Grand Maju is so good. One Paw Desires gets the 4k attack. And I've won several duels because of you know, Grand Maju alone. Because you can't negate his effect. Um, except for Skill Drain, which does come up once in a while. Grand Maju literally does not activate effects. Straight up attack. Log cards can't stop that alone. Construct your train signal red. This card is freaking hilarious. Because this deck, with well, the other parts that's interesting about this deck is people don't read card effects. And because the master does so many cards out there, people misread this card a lot. So when your opponent attacks, you can special double this card from your hand. And if you do, the target becomes this card. That means Grand Maju, Luna, uh, any of the Golden Castles, uh, they are blocked from the attack. You redirect the attack to this guy. Then that means the attack is negated one because it cannot be destroyed by that battle. And two, the most important part about this card is no one, a lot of people don't know about the fact that it can be destroyed after you attack it again. So your opponent attacks it again, it can destroy this monster. But a lot of people who don't read this properly think this is basically a Marshmallow. So you basically get free monster feel half the time. At the end of the day, this card has saved me in so many duels. Call by the Grave, for example. The reason why we play Battle Fader and Construction Train is to avoid Called by the Grave. Three Ash, pretty obvious. Ash is Ash. Fossil Dino. Now, I love this card a lot. And a lot of people will be like, why would you play this in Grand Maju? Well, here's the thing. If I special summon all the main monsters in this deck, like Gizmek, Hex, uh, even even Millions, after that, if I summon Fossil, then like your opponent can't special summon, and it's all a master duel. Every deck special summons no matter what. So with Fossil on the field, after you do all your special summons, it's GG most of the time because your opponent can't beat what you have in your field. And with Fossil Dying in combination, with Golden Castle of Stormborn. It is so good because Golden Castle of Stormborn, you, you can special summon from your deck to get it on the field, that's fine. But the other part is when your opponent's monster declares an attack, destroy that attacking monster. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponents equal to half the attack. If people don't read this card, they destroy their own monster and inflict damage to themselves. So if you have this and Fossil Dino on the field, your opponent cannot attack Fossil Dino. Your opponent has to find a way around it to destroy the spell card, then destroy the monster. So many resources to beat one card, and that's why Fossil Dina is so good in this deck. Luna, I love to death, and if you know my pendulum deck, Luna just normal summons, add another Luna, you can bounce a card in the field, really strong, especially with combination Kaiju, which I have Game of Seal for that. Really great card for you, just because it's a normal summon, you don't need a special summon Luna, and because that goes well with Fossil, it goes well with everything in this deck. Life Gilf? I don't know. But um, this guy is basically your goal is just to drop it to get Golden Castle. It's a nice bait for Ash. Uh, and when the summon, you can pop a card on field. Really great card. And it actually 
has a synergy with Arc Nemesis Eschatos? I don't know, but I'll explain that in a bit, but it's had such a good synergy because of that. Pranks that won always, always pranks won me games. I, I had a game where like literally top deck pranks pop and then I could just go off for days. Prank is so good. Game is ill. You get over those monsters that are hard to beat. Hextrude is a really good card because it's a free popper and they can attack twice if it destroys a monster by battle. It's really strong, especially gold, golden uh, castle sword because you can special summon it. So up front, this is so good, especially if you want to make a troll deck. Having castle with a combination of these three, you gotta put them in the deck if you want to make a really troll burn deck. Gizmek is so good because you can special summon it once per turn and you can pop a card on the field, but also because the Banshee card is an effect, it fuels up Gren, fuels up Eater. And honestly, and you're playing 60 cards, so you don't care how many cards you're wasting for that. It's such a good card. And then finally, for the monster that a lot of people will never think of using, and I only use this because I got it for free once, and I'm like, this is actually really good. You banish three monsters from different types from your graveyard and face up on the field and cannot be destroyed by card effects. That's really good off the bat. A 3k monster that cannot be destroyed by card effects. Then you can declare one monster on the field, destroy all monsters on field with that type, and your opponent, well, you yourself, cannot special summon monsters with that type for the next turn. So that means if you face a heavy deck that's focused on one type, which normally happens all the time, for example, if you say zombie, pop zombies. Your opponent can't do anything. You need three different types of monsters. Machine, Spellcaster, Aqua, Dino, Wing Beast, Rock, Zombie, Fiend, Fiend, Machine. There's a good chance when you draw this card, you're going to have at least two or three in your field or your graveyard. So because of that, summoning this guy's a breeze, having no destruction, and also blasting the field, you can't go wrong with that. Normal things. Regeki, obviously. Harpy, obviously. Monster, obviously. Staple cards in any deck. Three Paw of Desires, very obvious why. Paw of Dravigance, really good card, except it does conflict with Paw of Desires, but that's that's fine, it's not a big deal. The issue with this card is it banishes your extra deck, so you gotta hope that, like, luck's on your side and don't banish all your targets you need, because the Waking Dragon is the, one of the best cards in this game, and I'll explain why in a bit. Lightning Storm, yeah, it's alright. One's fine because you play field spell. It, it's okay. Golden Stormberg, as I said before, because it banishes cards as well as the fact. Grand Maju loves this. This is such a bay for it. Very good. And one call of the grave. I will put two. I will switch this guy to one and put this to two, but I can't afford call by the grave because I spent it, most of it on my extra deck. So uh, if you were to make this deck two call by graves, one arch nemesis. As Chatos. And then Metaverse is actually really good because most of the time your opponent knows what they're doing, they'll pop the field spell. Well, have a trap. They pop the trap, activate it, Stormbirds on the field. Basically, during battle phase, your opponent can't do anything. It's a nice, it's a nice card. I only picked this because you know, it was, I got it for free in the pack, but this terraforming either way is fine as long as you get Stormbird. Three evenly matched, you bash your opponent's cards. So good against decks that, especially, think about this way. If your opponent attacks, and you know you can survive, you can just take it and evenly match. But if you know you can't survive, battle fader, you take the you skip the battle phase, then it goes your turn, evenly match the field. Like, it is such a good like balance for you to slow down your opponent and make sure well if they waste all the resources, then you can take them all at once. Infinite Impertance has been such clutch for me in this game. Like, either player's turns, you can set on the field to, pop, to negate one card in the field. I have a weakness against Skill Drain, I've considered using Twin Twister, but this is probably the best card in my opinion because it's so versatile compared to Twin Twister. And now Waking the Dragon. This card is so good in Master Duel and a lot of people will say, it's it doesn't make sense, you, your opponent needs to pop cards in the field. Your opponents will pop every card in the field. I've never faced a duel where your opponent did not want to pop all your back row. Because of that, Waking becomes live. The only issue with Waking is Negation and Ash. So if Ash goes off, not much you can do. It's, yeah. And most of the time when they pump things in the back row, they don't set up the board fast enough. So when Waking happens, you can summon Last Warrior so your opponent cannot special summon monsters. But I also know that it destroys your own monster, so I don't like this card that much. Natura Exterior is such a good card against Sky, uh, Sky Striker or anything spell trap heavy, even Eldritch. Like, 
spells trap, negate, 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 GG. Like, it's good. Then there's Beezle. Beezle is cannot be destroyed by Bow or by Car Effect, so you know that's really good. Uh, but it is a knockoff version of Beezle the Diabolic. The reason I don't play this one is because I can't afford the URs. Uh, this is my main deck for Pendulum, so on this account I don't have enough URs for that. But if I could, I will put two of this guy there. Honestly, if your opponent is trying to like destroy cards in your field, like Access Talker, honestly, like just sitting there, your opponent can't do anything is great. And of course, Ray Raptor Ultimate Falcon, because unaffected by your other opponent's cards effects. The other target will also be Infinite Fortress Mega. Flops. It's unaffected, so if you know your opponent doesn't play XZs, summon this guy and your opponent can't destroy it or do anything against it. So, And also, you need to play two or three of or else you could lose it all because of pot extravagance and either a million. So, if you can pull off Waking, you got a lot of nice targets. And I will talk about other targets I will recommend after. Macros Cosmos actually wins a lot of games because a lot of decks rely on graveyard including pendulums too having this can stop anything you're from your opponent from cycling so this was built because i hate tri brigade i hate eldritch i hate dryton so anytime i see those decks and i have this in my hand it's like yeah you guys are screwed gg <laughs> now we'll talk about extra deck and last wear another planet play two of you just play every two of the waking dragon targets you want Natura, I play 3 because it's such a good one, especially against spells and traps. Beezle's good, but again, I will recommend Beezle's of the Ebotic. Number 68 is because I need a rank 8 if I ever have a situation, but I've never had two rank 8s I want. Like, Gizmak, Hex, I am not going to XE them because I got Storm for on the field. If I didn't, at the end of the day, these are stronger beaters than most rank 8s out there. Ray Raptor Ultimate Falco, I will play 2 of. I like this one a lot. Uh, I play Zeus because again, I... I have that one already, and I would have replaced this with a second Ray Raptor Falcon. And for the Link's uh, IP, because Link, just in case you want to Link off too, just to move things from the field to the grave. Infinite Track is such a good card, I will put two in this deck, maybe three if I could afford it. Warlord can actually be summoned by Waking, which is interesting enough. And uh, yeah, if your opponent attacks Boro, just take your opponent's boss too. And then Access Talker, I've been in a situation where You'd be surprised, I could link 4 so I can get access talker. I've lost duels because I didn't do it, so I just put it in the deck because... Yeah, Underworld Goddess. Because of how you spam the field, because of how Constructor Train Signal goes, your opponent wouldn't really pop it. If you get 2 of them in your hand, uh, plus 1 or 2 of these monsters, uh, you could just link some of your opponent's monsters and then you can just summon this one. It's pretty straightforward. But yeah, this is the deck and I will recommend trying this out if... You got a lot of URs, you like Grand Monjus, or you like trolling around. This deck, its goal is every card you draw has the potential to win you the game. Because of that, it's such fun synergy. That's how I got a Platinum 1, because every card I drew, I knew I could do something about it. And that's what makes it so fun. Now, cards I will recommend. Forbidden Droplet is actually a strong choice, but uh, Dryton Ritual... Other decks, I don't really need this against. And DD Crow is also a choice, and Summon Limit I use for a bit. Um, but because of Arch Nemesis as Chattels, I found that more powerful than some of them. Paw Duality is also a good choice because if you don't special on your turn, you special on your opponent's turn, like Gizmak can be special on your opponent's turn. Oh, uh, Paw Duality is not a bad choice either. And also, Wabaku, Swift Scarecrow, these are good choice cards too to actually have in your deck because they stall. And remember, if your opponent dedicates a spells of trap removal on the field, Flip them, use them, and your opponent wastes all the resources for that, and that's what makes this great. And I do know people talk about the danger version of it. When you put Maxi against this deck, you just say, alright, normal Fossil Dyna, normal Luna, or normal Manju, and it's like, Maxi doesn't do anything against this deck. Um, and let's talk about the extra deck with Waking Dragon, because again, Waking Dragon is such a strong card in this meta, because you only have one game, and everyone wants to pop. Your targets are obviously Beezles of the Diabolic Dragon, it's a very good card. Time Lord, uh, it's a very interesting card because when this card attacks, you can't destroy by battle by card effects, and when it attacks, all cards are banished. That's really interesting when you think about it because then you can clear the field every time and doesn't even go back, it doesn't go back to the extra deck, it just stays on the field. So your opponent has a difficulty trying to get this out of the way. I also thought about Unchained um, Abomination. It's just a popper all day. You can just pop things when it destroys things, pop things when it's destroyed, pop things at the end of the turn. And I know Flower Cardian is a good choice where you can negate a spell trap. Uh, but 
most likely you're going to deal with monster effects where it can't stop it. So even though it's 5k attack, that's nice. I feel like Beezle, Ray Raptor, uh, Infinite Fortress Mecha Claw, uh, Clops. I just feel it's a bit more versatile, but this is still a good card at the end of the day. And an interesting one, Draco Berserker of Tenny. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can banish it. And also if it attacks an effect monster by battle since a graveyard, this card gains the attack equal to destroy monster and it attack twice during this battle phase. What makes this really interesting is the fact that like, well, you banish a card anytime your monster does an effect, so that's really good, except it doesn't negate. That's why it's an interesting one, and I, I'm heavily considering trying out this one, but yeah. At the end of the day, this is deck. Got me the Platinum 1. I'm very happy with this deck overall. It just, it's fun. It's Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is all about, like, give me one, then give me another. It's like, take turns, make things happen. It's a good way to break boards. It's a good way to trick people. And most importantly, it's a good way to, you know, have fun with the way Yu-Gi-Oh is. It's, every card is always going to be a heart of a card. If you want to have a fun deck and upfront, this is a Platinum 1 deck. So, I'm as shocked as you, but in Master Duel, this is one of the best decks out there. So, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys try out this deck. I'm going to show you guys some highlights hilarious highlights of how this deck wins games. So I'll see you guys next time.